Welcome to the SPIVA Canada Scorecard. So this is the data. We have the theory. This is the data. You can get the data in a lot of places, but uh, the SPIVA reports organize the data in a very interesting way and it's easy to understand. So I use the SPIVA uh, reports. And so what we're looking at here is an end of year 2018 SPIVA Canada Scorecard. SPIVA stands for Standard and Poor's Index versus Active. That's how they get SPIVA. What is the SPIVA report? The SPIVA Canada Scorecard provides a semi-annual update on the Active versus Index passive debate in Canada. The SPIVA Canada Scorecard shows the performance of actively managed Canadian mutual funds compared with the S&P Dow Jones indices in their respective categories. Although many such reports are available, the SPIVA Canada scorecard is unique in that it offers the following characteristics. Survivorship bias correction. Okay, if a fund has bad performance, you know, the company gets a little embarrassed by this performance, and it's hard to attract money into the fund, and that, you know, these fund companies are ultimately businesses. They want to attract money into the funds. So what do they do? How do they get rid of this embarrassing performance? They just close the fund. That's what survivorship bias is. The fund didn't survive. Apples to apples comparison, not much of a big deal there. But the benchmark you choose is very important. And I have a beef with Canadian equity funds because they, even with the SPIVA report, the Canadian equity funds typically benchmark against the S&P TSX composite. However, it's hard to find a large cap, a big company Canadian equity fund that doesn't have at least a small portion of its assets invested outside of Canada for reasonable reasons. There are reasonable reasons for this. However, if that's the case, you know, let's say a fund, I'll use an example. It's probably easier to explain this with an example. Let's say a fund always has 3 or 4% of the fund's assets invested in the U.S. The benchmark should then be 97% S&P TSX Composite, 3% S&P 500, a U.S. Uh, index. And asset weighted returns. Equal weighted returns tell you what the average fund did what their return performance was. Asset weighted returns tells you what the average investor did. So we're on page seven. I should say that anybody can get this report. Google SPIVA Canada and you will come close to this report. You'll get to the website and you might have to search a little bit, but you will, uh, you are able to download this and read it yourself. Okay, so report number one, percent of active funds underperforming the index. Canadian equity funds compared to the S&P TSX composite. Uh, I always look at the longest time period available. So this is the 10 year number up until the end of 2018. 91% of Canadian equity funds underperformed the return of the S&P TSX composite. Let's look at US equity funds. 97% of U.S. equity funds offered to Canadian investors underperformed the S&P 500 after currency conversion. The performance of U.S. equity funds offered to Canadians, the performance is after currency conversion, so the, the index is converted as well. 97% underperformed. International equity, 95% of international equity funds offered to Canadian investors underperformed the benchmark. Let's look at returns. <clears throat> so this is equal weighted returns. The average Canadian equity fund over a 10 year period ending at the end of 2018 uh, returned 6.77% per year. It's an average annual rate of return. The index did 7.92. US equity 11.21, S&P 500, 14.27. They underperformed by over, by over 300 basis points. So this is average fund performance. International equity, 6.55. The index did 8.16. The data is damning for the active 
manager. Now we'll go to asset weighted returns. So this is how the average client fared. So the average client in a Canadian equity fund received an average annual rate of return of 6.73. The index did 7.92. You know, you can get the index for 10 basis points. So if you were an index investor over these past 10 years, you would have got 7.82 or somewhere very close to that. U.S. equity, 11.25. The, the, uh, the benchmark, 14.27. You can get this index for under 10 basis points. So you would have got 14.17 or somewhere very close to that. International equity, 5.59. The index, 8.16. You can get this for probably 15 basis points. So you would have got 8, whereas the average fund investor got 5.59. The data is damning for the active uh, manager. The active manager is not adding value. And... Uh, you know, the theory is sound why the active manager isn't adding value. It's a zero-sum game around the market return. So I hope that helps.